Wow, so we've got a major astrological activation, don't we? A big time astrological activation has emerged, which is Pluto and Aquarius. It happened yesterday. With this video, what I want to talk about is the notion of awaking in a dream, awaking in a dream state, because that's the main theme that uh, is coming up for me as I've been feeling into this shift and feeling into this energy. And the idea is that, you know, this is a dreamy reality. Everything's kind of a dream. Everything's mediated through digitization. Everything is strangely kind of non-real or real simultaneously. And I think that's a part of Neptune and Pisces. And I know in this video, I want to talk about both Neptune and Pluto, which are things I'm not as often centering, but because they're so important in the larger scope of the astrology, they're important because Pluto's coming to Aquarius now, one more short stint in Capricorn, and then it's in Aquarius for good for 20 years. Neptune and, and Saturn are getting closer and closer together this year. They get about 10 degrees here in 2024, but then they meet and get very, very close in Pisces and then meet in, in Aries in 2026. So the Neptune-Saturn story is dominating the astrology. So these longer term cycles of Aquarius and and Pisces are operative, but it's the shorter term activations of those because we have Aquarius stelliums are about to arrive. Mars and Venus will meet in Aquarius. They haven't made an aspect for months and months and months and months. They meet in February just after Pluto's ingress into Aquarius. And then we have two eclipses that all of the rulers by domicile of the two eclipses in in March and April, those domicile lords are in Pisces with Neptune, with Saturn. And so this spring, and late winter may be defined as the Aquarius Pisces spring and late winter. And so what are these two energies and how do they interoperate and how do they relate? And my idea is that we're waking up in a dream. Uh, the other thing I was gonna say is that we've, I mean, I talking to a lot of people the last week or two and really strange energy out there. You know, with this channel, I'm more like symbolism and kind of left brain in terms of my approach. Academic, let's stick to text. Let's just kind of break things down in connected ways so that when we're embracing and talking symbolism, it's not some wild, you know, disconnected, untethered way to delineate. So I rarely do this, but I've been seeing it from so many people like the dreams. People are like feeling we really weird and strange and dreamy and almost like this predictive dreams. And so this dreamy Neptune and Pisces, this kind of unreality. Remember, Neptune came into Pisces in 2011, right around the time that social media took off and the cell phones, we all got lost on Instagram and Facebook and the cell and we're lost in the black iron mirror. And I think with Pluto and Aquarius, it's the beginning of a kind of an awakening from that dream where we're humanity and the collective and you in a sector of your chart, you know, all of us are going to be processing those major changes of how mediated the, the reality is through digitization. And we can wake up in the dream. And this, this Pluto and Aquarius ing ingress is a major jolt of that, where you might look around and, and ask bigger questions, more serious curiosities. That's, a, that's Aquarius. Mercury is innovation and curiosity. Saturn is seriousness and deep structure. And so it's like serious curiosities around what you want to make in your reality. What are you wanting to co-create? How do you want to play within the dream? You know, a waking dream is when one where you realize, hey, you're dreaming, you wake up, and then you can sort of control might be the wrong word, but maneuver within, using the will to kind of play within the dream. So how are you playing? How do you want to play? How do you want to integrate the awareness that you've gained in the last decade? Pluto and Capricorn destroying deeper motivation gets transformed. And now we go into that outer world. You know, I think we're going to need to think of one going forward, realize that there's a dreamy landscape that we're embedded in. And this will be extant and get increasingly so the rest of 2024 into 2025 with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces getting closer together. In local time, this upcoming eclipse season is all about Pisces. All the rulers are in Pisces. The lunar eclipse in Libra, the solar eclipse in Aries, 8 April has a Mars in Pisces ruling it. Aquarius is about the outer world. It's an air sign. It's a sign of people around us and sociability. I was just quoting Robert Hand on X Twitter that Aquarius has to do with the social. He says air signs are always social, but Aquarius is Saturn and it's Mercury as the two rulers. And so it's like the social innovation that are deep and profound and heavy and serious. It's deep-rooted, innovative change for the collective. The sun is exiled there, meaning that our individual selves are less important 
and instead we have to consider others and the group and be thinking about these outer world you know, configurations that we're ensconced in. This is why I think about the waking side of Awake in the Dream. The air sign Aquarius wants us to wake up and get tangible and get explorative with the world around us and realize that each of us is a node and we're interconnected with people and everything around us and we can impact others. You know, we do have our thoughts, our ideas, the things that we support, the people we engage with and interface with. These are all extremely important for tethering society and our role in society, you know, so we need to kind of wake up within these dreamy landscapes of the Piscean. Pisces is an eternal sign. It's a night sex sign. It's ruled by Venus and Jupiter. It's like finding deep embedded truths and creative pleasurable states. It's basically the psychedelic sign. I think it's the most psychedelic sign in a certain way because we you're embedded with psychedelics. It's about an internal experience. You know, it's about feeling the trip and getting tripped out and then you come back from the psychedelic trip and you're then back into reality. Coming into more localized time with the full moon in Leo, 25 uh, January. I'm recording this on 21 January, but 25 January, right here around the corner, we have a full moon in Leo, first full moon or new moon since Pluto has entered Aquarius. And it's in the fixed axis where there will be pileups in February. Stelliums of planets, you know, Pluto and Aquarius will meet Mercury, Mars, and then Venus in order. So localized in time, faster moving planet triggers to Pluto. And this full moon is kind of the opening salvo of that, where you'll have Jupiter quite close and it'll be a T-square. Jupiter in Taurus, Pluto in Aquarius, and the moon in Leo. And you see that T-square. So there's kind of a push or a tension maybe around how you're wanting to wake up, how you might want to be active over the next period. And I think because Pluto's involved, these are a little bit more higher level or longer term planning moments with how we want to engage. And that's kind of the theme of this video. I'm kind of thinking about a tenor or a zone of dreaminess that we might have to continually wake up in and try not to get bogged down in the being washed within these greater Piscean uh, seascapes and try to kind of touch earth, they say, touch grass or, you know, slap ourselves. Hey, I'm, I'm awake. I'm alive. I can do this. I have, I have will. I have generativity. I have initiative. And because this is sort of the last of the night sect signs being activated by outer planets. In 2026, Barbo's Basket, it's all day sect signs. It is all day sex signs. Uranus in Gemini, Jupiter in Leo, Pluto in Aquarius, Saturn in Aries, and Neptune in Aries. And so it's this dance of dreaming and then being awake in the dream and then letting ourselves dream, you know, going into the depths of the unconscious, of the tripping state and of the, you know, psychedelic states, but keeping in mind there is a reality that's tangible that you're a part of and that you can initiate within this kind of dance back and forth. I think is a, a very, very much a theme of February and March's astrology and then eclipse season.